Good day everyone, welcome to Bright Engineering. So today we are going to continue our theorems and our circuit analysis and today we are going to look at nodal analysis, right? So when you have a nodal analysis question or when you have any question that you're supposed to use nodal analysis, sometimes the difficulty is identifying the nodes, right? So today we are going to look at how easily you are, you'll be able to identify the nodes and then how to go about it using nodal analysis. Right. So unlike mesh, when we said that we assign currents to the closed loops, for nodal analysis, we assign voltage at every, at the particular nodes that we are considering. Right. And in order to know the node that you have to consider, we have to confer with our KCL that we know that the current that enters a particular node is the same amount of current that leaves that particular node. Right. So now we consider the junctions where when current gets there, it's going to split. Right. So whenever you get a junction where you know that current is going to split, then it means that you have a node. So from here, when this 4 volt produces a current and the current is going this way, the current is going to flow through this 5 amps. But when it gets here, some is going here, some will also flow through this. So it means that this here is a node. Right. So it means if we have a node here, then we can assign our first nodal voltage to it. If current is also continuing, right? When it gets here, it will split. Some would go here, some would come here. So it means that this is also a node. And now we can assign our second node voltage, which is V2 to it, right? Now, when you look at the currents that flew here and the current that's also flown here, when it gets here, ideally it has to split. Some has to go here, some has to go here. But then there is no element here. So it means that current always wants the easy path out, right? And the current that also gets here is also going to do the same thing. So it means that we can just straight away squeeze the downside to give us just one single node, right? So it means that the node that we are going to attach to this down current is going to be the same, right? So we are going to call that the reference node and we are going to bring that one particular here or any other part. You can bring it here, 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 that's right. And this reference node is always to F. Right. And then we are going to assign it as V0, which is equal to 0 because there is no voltage there. Right. So now, let's consider this question. Once that we are able to assign this nodal voltages to it, now we are going to look at the currents for it, like I said earlier. So, unless of course you have, unless of course you have a voltage source that is going to produce current, you assume that all the other voltages are leaving that particular node right good so here we have this four volts which is going to produce a current into this so we are going to assume that the current that is going to flow here and then here is going to be less out there and then out there right so now let's consider this first node so at node one which is the v1 we are going to get four minus v1 over five Mind you, I said that even though we are assigning node voltages to it, we are interested in the currents. And we know that from Ohm's law, I is equal to V over R, right? So it is our voltage divided by our resistance. That is what we have here. So here it is the difference in these voltages divided by this resistance. So now we get our I. That's the current flowing through this side. That's entering here, right? Which is going to be equal to, because this current is entering, and we are saying that the current that enters should be equal to the current that leaves, right? So for this, we're going to get V1 divided by 15. So ideally, it has to be a difference in voltage divided by this resistance. And the difference in voltage is going to be V1 minus this V0 that we already know, which is the reference node, and it's equal to zero. So there is going to be V1 minus zero over 15. So we just chose to write it V1 over 15, right? Good. Plus here which is going to be v1 minus v2 divided by this which is 10 right so now we just have to find our lcm and then multiply through so now we are going to multiply through by 30 right and if we multiply through by 30 30 goes into this six times right so we are going to get six to bracket four minus v1 is equal to 30 goes here two times so two v1 Plus it goes here 3, so 3 V1 minus V2. Right, so we are getting 24 minus 6 V1 is equal to 2 V1 plus 3 V1 minus 3 V2. Right, so now we can just 
make one stand alone so we can group like terms and we are going to get 11 v1 minus 3 v2 which is going to be equal to 24 right and having 2 plus 3 which is 5 this will come here plus 6 which is going to give us 11 minus 3 and less right so now we can get our v1 to be equal to 24 minus 3 v2 divided by 11 right and we are done with the first node our voltage so we know that v1 is this right so at node 2 just like we did please mind you when we got to the node 1 and then we were finding the current the current's direction we said that the current here it's leaving because this is entering and this has to leave right so already we've assigned a direction to this current already so it means that this current is entering right and if this current is entering then it means that the rest of the current has to leave right so we are getting this and we are getting this right so now we are going to maintain this one so for node the entering current is going to be v1 minus v2 over 10 right which is going to be equal to the 11 which is v2 minus this is also a voltage so we are going to subtract this from this instead right so v2 minus 6 over 12 plus v2 minus 0 the reference node divided by 8 right and then here we can also find our lcm so our lcm is going to be 20 120 sorry because 120 is common to these three right so 120 goes here 12 times because 10 divided by 120 is going to give us 12 so you get 12 v1 minus v2 is equal to it goes into here 10 times 10 v2 minus 6 plus it also goes here 15 times which is 15 v2 right so now we can expand v1 minus 12 v2 is equal to 10 v2 minus 16 plus 15 v2 right so now we can just expand to get our 12 v1 then minus v2 here we get another minus 10 v2 to come here and then minus 15 v2 to come here right so we are getting 37 which is minus 37 v2 is equal to minus 60 right but then for v1 we've already found that v1 is 24 minus 3 v2 over 11 so it means wherever we find v1 we can just insert this equation so here we are going to get 12 into bracket 24 minus 3 v2 over 11 minus 37 v2 which is equal to minus 60 right so this 11 is just going to multiply through so we are going to get 12 into bracket 24 minus 3 v2 minus 11 times minus 37 which is going to give us 407 v2 is equal to 11 times minus 60 which is minus 660 so 12 times 24 will give us 288 minus 12 times this which is going to give us minus 36 v2 minus 407 v2 to minus 660 all right so sorry for the v1 it's rather 24 plus 3 v2 divided by 11 because minus 3 v2 will cross this here and it's going to be plus right so whenever you see v1 it's going to be 24 plus so here it's going to be plus so instead of minus we are going to get plus 36 v2 there right so v2 this plus this is going to give us minus 371 v2 which is equal to minus 660 this crosses to give us minus 228 right 288 so we are going to get minus 948 so now our v2 is going to be this everything here divided by minus 371 right so 
948 divided by minus 371 is going to give us positive 200 and sorry positive 2.55 volts right so now we know that our v2 is 2.55 volts right and then our v1 is also 24 plus 3 v2 over 11 so we just have to put it in here so we're getting v1 is 24 plus 3 times 2.55 right divided by 11 which is going to give us 2.877 volts right so now that we have our v1 and our v2 here now we can find any current when we want to find right so if you want to find the current through this 12 ohms we know that this current is v2 minus this 6 divided by 12 right and then our v2 is 2.55 so we're going to get 2.55 minus 12 divided by 6 and 2.55 minus 12 is going to give you a negative answer right it's going to give you 9.4 negative 9.45 and we are dividing by 6 so the current is going to be negative it doesn't change anything what it is trying to tell you is that ideally this current flow shouldn't have been this way but then it should be this way because this six is already a current producing element so it's going to produce current this way right so the negative answer is showing you that the flow of current should have been this way and that's also whenever you get and you get a negative answer you just have to conclude that the flow of the of the current should have been the other way around right so it means that if you have to find the current flowing through this our answer is just going to be our v1 divided by 15 which is going to be 2.877 divided by 15. So the current flowing through the 15 ohms is going to give us 0 0.192 amps, right? So like I said earlier, if you have to find this, it's going to give us so current through the 12 ohms is going to give us our V over R, right? Which is going to be our v2 minus 6 divided by 12 our v2 here is 2.55 so minus 6 divided by 12 here right and then the answer is going to give us negative 0 0.288 right amps so in conclusion we can just conclude that the, the current is rather flowing in the opposite direction right so it means that this should have been this way instead right so always when you have when you have node voltages like that and then you are starting from this side aside the voltage that is producing the current which is entering assume that all the other currents are leaving that particular node okay thank you very much for following please don't forget to subscribe comment share and like